supernatural. For example, if I said to you, um, yeah, not, not in my face here. <laughs> so, Way too many microphones here for me. You, you know what it is? It's just different cameras, got different it, channels. Got it, got it. But everyone's just trying to do their own thing. So, but again, just to kind of preface it, I, I'm not here to convince you. I'm sure. not here for a gotcha moment. All right, all right. If, you, uh, if you got me, it's, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. That, that, I appreciate that. Right. But, but again, mate, my, my thing it, it transcends all this. Okay. It's um, it's the, it's the whole reason that I'm here, which is I genuinely believe in God. I believe that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the final messenger. Uh, I, I will present to you my definition of God and okay. see what you think All right. and I'll give you adequate time and All it'll right, be yeah. more of a conversation oh, rather than me speaking at you sure. and I hope you kind of enjoy this and it's uh, you learn something from it and I learn something from it as well yeah. so Michael what I was saying is with when it comes to the Antichrist we believe that he can come and he will claim to be God and he will be able to show things that might be able to fulfill your criteria and however some people are even of the opinion that hologram technology has reached such a level yeah. that I mean some people are saying that even uh, although it's being regarded as conspiracy but some people are saying that certain things have actually been hologram events and that's up to them to kind of discuss and debate that so what, what I would argue and what I would say is before I even get to that here's the Islamic stance here's my stance of God and let me know what you think about this and I'd love for you to challenge it yeah All right. so as a Muslim I believe there's a four-pronged uh, kind of criteria of God. The one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the independent. Does not beget, nor is he begotten. All right. And there's none like him. Okay. Yeah. So when you look at the uh, creator, as a Muslim, that's our definition of God. What do you think about what I've just said so far? I, I, that's perfectly fine if that's what God is. I'm not opposed to that being the truth. Okay, in terms of criteria of God, what about if somebody said God is a tree? God is a tree. That just sounds weird to me. Okay, great. If somebody said oh, God is that guy over there that's sitting under the tree? Uh, I would be very, very skeptical. Okay, fantastic. So I was just checking that the yeah. definition that I've given you, it resonates with your innate disposition. Like it, sure. nothing kind of sticks out of the ordinary. Yeah, yeah okay. fantastic. Yeah. Uh, philosophically, do you accept that there is a necessary being? No. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so let's start with there, Michael. All right. So in terms of us as human beings, uh, would you say that we are dependent or independent? I mean, we're dependent on each other, we're dependent on the sun, so in that sense we depend on other people to survive and Fantastic. other things to survive. Fantastic. Yeah. So we depend on something, that thing depends on something, that thing depends on something. If it, the sun eventually. Exactly, and that depends on something that will relies on hydrogen and helium and yeah. that requires yeah. nuclear yeah. fission and blah blah blah. Yeah. So it keeps going on and on and on and on. I, I would argue, and so have philosophers, uh, at the first step would be, because we're dealing with philosophy here, yeah? So philosophically, if we look at dependencies yeah. and we keep going on, philosophically there has to be an end to that chain of dependencies, which philosophically is called a necessary being. And the, a, a simple analogy that I can put forward for that is, if I am to throw a ball yeah. Yeah, and I have to ask this person's permission, he has to ask this person's permission and if it goes on for infinity, asking permissions, would I ever get to throw the ball? Well, maybe you don't need to ask permission to throw a ball. I feel like that's a weird analogy. Yeah, but if I required permission, yeah. let's just say I came up with a better analogy, but it, this was a simple analogy, a child that requires permission to, I don't know, uh, eat the cookies so, or okay, any analogy. I, I, I Do you see? Your, I understand your point. So like a, an atheist might respond and say, well, there But just before that, just before that, just so, before uh, that, uh, just so uh, I can finish it. So if it goes on for infinity, would I ever get to throw the I ball? Guess, no, you wouldn't. So the, yeah, so there has to be an end to that chain for me to throw the ball. Go ahead. Oh, well, I guess uh, an atheist, which I'm not, would say there's just innate laws of physics that just have existed and that's the end final point. Right, but, but when you're talking about a final point, 
A final point of what though? What came before well, the final point? Thing. Okay. You have to ask permission of laws of physics. Can I do this? Right, right, right. So this is an analogy for dependencies. So yeah. in order to make the argument, one would have to concede that there can be an infinite regress. There is such a thing as infinite regress. Okay, sure. Do you see? Whatever. Which is no, 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 no. Okay. So, so here's the thing, Michael. I'm, I'm not here to kind of put forward an argument if it's not settling well with you. I'd rather you pushed back you're, you're, and we just stood are, by that. You are, you are claiming that there needs to be some initial source for the universe effectively. What, what I'm saying is that there's no such thing as infinite regress. So if we are dependent things and dependency goes on forever, it would be an absurdity because just like I wouldn't be able to throw a ball, we, you and I wouldn't be able to exist. What if the dependency is a circle and eventually it comes back to you and you're able to give yourself permission? Right, so the thing with that is it's like a mother giving birth to a child. Yeah. Which is circularity, which is irrational. Yeah, well, obviously mother giving birth to the child analogy doesn't fit this. But well, asking permission to throw a ball, I think like, he could do that. Right, so if we then stick with this yeah. specific analogy, it would be... Uh, uh, we're talking in terms of dependencies, right? I guess. Okay, so in terms, so in terms of because I was, I thought you went back to the ball one. Oh sure. That's yeah. why I wanted to make okay. sure. Yeah. So in terms of the dependencies, um, so, so the dependency or the cause would be the effect of its of the thing that gave it cause. Do you see? Your, your point is there cannot be an infinite regress and a, or a loop. It needs to go to a finite point where the permission is granted. I, I'm saying that circularity Can't is, yeah, it doesn't okay. work. And I'm also arguing, which you can push back at, I'd, I'd love that. So linear-wise, it doesn't work either. Okay. So I, I want to hear why you would think it works, uh, and then I, then, then I can respond to that. Uh, I mean, in terms of the permission thing, I can understand why this does not work. Yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll accept that. Yeah. So think of it similarly in terms of dependencies as well. Sure. If everything depended on something that depended on something that yeah. depended on something, Forever. yeah. Do you see? Yeah. For us being here, yeah. it's it's, it's to start it. yeah. which in philosophy they call the necessary necessary existence. Sure. Yeah, which is something yeah. accepted by Aristotle, yeah. Leibniz. Kant and the likes. What do you think about this so far? Make sense? Okay. So this is the pretty much the starting point of even Western philosophy that they don't necessarily have an have an issue with the necessary being. They have an issue with the necessary being being God. That's okay. that's where the yeah. issue comes in. Yeah, which is probably where you'll be able to relate more. Okay. Now now what do you think about when I say that this necessary existence is independent? Uh, as in, this necessary thing does not, it's just like an innate thing that exists on its own, that's fine? Yeah. Okay. What, what about if this necessary existence has power? An immeasurable amount of power. Well, so that, this gets more into where I said, what if it's just laws of physics that just exist permanently? Okay. Because maybe they don't have power, they're just laws exist. Right, but, but bear in mind, there's something called the fallacy of reification. Okay. Yeah, laws are, cr uh, are prescriptive and descriptive. Laws don't create things. For example, for example, the law of arithmetic. Yeah, the law of arithmetic can tell me how much money there are in my, there is in my bank account, yeah. but the law of arithmetic cannot create the money in the first place. The law of motion. You're more than welcome to jump in if you want. Sorry? You're more than welcome to jump in with that if you've got. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so the law of motion is not something that moves the billiards ball. Um, the law of motion describes the movement of the ball. Rather, it is the, the person with holding the cue, the one causing the ball to move. The law of motion describes the movement. So laws are descriptive, they are not creative. Sure. So when... So, so, what if, what if so the fallacy of reification, just to kind of um, complete that point, fallacy of reification is when you give something that's abstract, concrete properties. So when they say, for example, chance created this, forces created this. So uh, attributing creative power to forces is what I was just emphasizing there. Go ahead. Okay, so we'll... Um Laws of physics like you know, gravity, relativity, 
have influenced a lot of the motion and like we talked about the sun and I feel like correct me if I'm wrong what you're saying is there must be something else that set it all in motion to begin with is that correct uh, yeah forces require something um, to to direct them because forces are unconscious they are blind um, they are abstract yeah. so to, to say that a force has created something like a a fully like a big bang or something. yeah like the like the big bang or even planet earth yeah. If we just attribute that to, like Stephen Hawking said, to um, gravity, yeah. he says in his book, The Grand Designer, uh, or The Grand Design, um, that gravity created everything. But to say that the gravity itself is creating, like you've got the river, the, the mountains, the trees, etc. Yeah. So, uh, to that I would say, okay, appealing to laws of physics, still sticking with this, there's either some other laws of physics we don't know yet, or there is some other thing that set it in motion. I can accept that. But then I would come back to the philosophical argument. Yeah. Is that thing itself, because philosophically, um, dependency and independency, if you want to look Technically, because it's recorded when you get a chance when you go back home and you're like, what did this bearded guy tell me? You know, is he just waffling? Right. So what I want to say is stuff that you can maybe refer back to as well. Sure. So although I used simplistic words like dependent and independent, yeah. that's known as the contingency argument. And the technical terms are contingent and necessary. That's why I said that the end of that chain is a necessary existence or the necessary being. Yeah. So the, the definition of something that's contingent is something that is made of parts uh -huh. um, because th think about it Michael if something's made out of parts and you take that part out then that thing is dependent upon the part isn't it, it so it, it yeah. breaks down yeah so it's it's, it's not independent so okay. contingent I'm using contingent and dependent interchangeably yeah Understand. Okay. so so it's cons it's made of parts it can cease to exist and it can't be any other way something that's necessary is it's not consistent of parts can't be any other way and it can't cease to exist so uh, coming back to your energy thing if you come back to the energy thing is energy composed of parts of course energy is composed of parts can energy be any other way can be any other way can energy cease to exist it can cease to exist so it doesn't fulfill the criteria of uh, because think about it I mean the law of thermodynamics or uh, or, or the what second not. law of thermodynamics that the net change in entropy is always positive. Is that what you're referring to? Not necessarily in in the sense that when people talk about energy, uh, energy being removed in one aspect but then coming in another converted. form. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's converted. But that again is within the the paradigm of the world as we know it since the Big Bang, the time and space, etc., etc. Sure. So, with p pertaining to that, if we look at the definition of necessity not being composed of parts, can't be any other way and cannot cease to exist. It cannot be uh, energy. And when we're looking at independent, energy isn't necessarily independent. It's reliant upon something else as well, isn't it? Uh, yes. So coming back to the power thing, power by definition, you get from that which you come from. Yeah. So if, if something creates something, that thing relies on it for power that's okay. that's the nature of power right. so if we then go in this infinite regress would it make sense to you with what I've said that this necessary existence also makes sense for it to have power as well uh, sure it has power. okay so it has power it has independence yeah would you say it has intelligence maybe okay now I would make the argument for intelligence yeah Okay. And then let me know if that's convincing yeah. to you because uh, the DNA, our yeah? DNA, our DNA, All right. or DNA even in general as well, of, uh, of of living beings. Are your hands cold? I have poor blood circulation. I'm fine. Okay, you can. You're more I'm than good, welcome I'm to. Take your, no, I'll listen to your talk. Okay, yeah. but if you need gloves, just ask me. I you can use. Okay, because I want you to be comfortable. Thank you. Um, I'm listening. That's fine. So, so the last thing, huh? Intelligence. So, DNA has a great deal of information. Yeah. Um, now, the argument would be, <laughs> where where has this information come from? An analogy that I would like to use for this would be a dictionary. Yeah. Okay. That di a dictionary has a great deal of information. Can you give me an example of something that has a great deal of information, 
that has come from something non-intelligent. Great deal of information from something non-intelligent. Which is what we're claiming of our DNA, that, that's the link. Well, I, I can think of smart aleck answers of some dumb people saying things, but, um, uh, no. I'm, I'm speaking to Michael, though. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, yeah. so bearing that in mind, Michael, I would argue that considering the amount of information that's present in our DNA, and you, you know, this is biology from like A-level, adenine, thymine, guatinine, and you know, ATGC, yeah. you know, the DNA sequences and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And then how that's used to make genes, makes chromosomes. So this is something that I was looking into as well, because I thought if, if I come across somebody like Michael and I, and I have to tell them that, look, I have to prove to them that this necessary existence has intelligence, sure. what would I say to Michael? And one, and one of the things, that, that, that was an example, but one of the things I would say is uh, objective and mathematical, you're economist, yeah? A little bit. Okay, so a bit of math. So mathematically um, and objectively, there are things of design in creation. And I would argue, and hopefully you would agree as well, that when a person sees design, that points towards an intelligence. Typically, yeah. So when you look at, say, the Fibonacci sequence, or the golden ratio, the golden yeah. spiral, yeah. even symmetry in nature, like the butterflies, um, and even when you take like the, um, the 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 golden spiral and the golden ratio, that's we see this in uh, sunflower seeds. We use this. Uh, we, we see them in like leaves on yeah. stems as well. So. The complexity and the design in nature is something that I, I would argue can be objectively and mathematically measured. Sure. Make sense? Yeah. So if there is design, uh, it makes sense that it comes from an intelligent source, hence the necessary being, it makes sense for us to claim that he's intelligent or it's intelligent. Whatever this initiating source yeah. is has intelligence. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. And would you agree and would you accept now that it also has wisdom? I need you to define wisdom. Okay. So wisdom is applying the correct information in the correct capacity and at the right time. For example, so, for, I'll give you an example. I, I teach my son that look, disabled people are in wheelchairs and you know we should be kind to them etc etc and um, my son he sees a person in a wheelchair and then he goes hey you're disabled I'm like god damn it <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's not wise that's it's not a wise statement to make so I would say to him but he's like but dad so he's got intelligence he's absorbed the information but what he's doing with that is he's not being wise because he's not applying the intelligence in the right place. So it's like decision making. This is your making. This is your making. So the question is: this intelligent initial source is there intelligent or is there like wise decision making? Yeah. So I'm saying design of the application of the intelligence. Very good. Yeah. Is that the idea? Yeah. Um, I'm going to say it does not necessarily need to be that way. Okay. The reason... You have to convince me. Go ahead. Okay. So, if, if we look at, for example, the intricate way in which the, the, the ecosystem is on this yeah. planet, yeah. when we look at... Um, I'm having to go back to uh, A-level biology now. Um, your food webs. Remember food webs? Yeah. That this organism depends on this, yeah. that depends on this, that depends on this. So that shows that these organisms being dependent and then when you take one organism out yeah. of the ecosystem, then the other one grows and then it becomes chaos. So in other words, things have been put in their right places. For example, our hair would grow, our eyebrows would not grow, otherwise we'd have to go to the barbers, you know, every... Yeah, it would be really annoying if our brain was on our hands, you know, if our heart was on our backside, we wouldn't be able to sit down. So yeah. the way things have been proportioned, the things, like Einstein said, the fact that this world is even comprehensible, raises questions as to the one that's brought it into existence. I'm kind of doing, um, adding a bit of detail to Einstein. I'm not saying he's saying all of this. Einstein's clear statement was the fact that we can even comprehend this world 
is, you know, something worth thinking about. Yeah. You're going to say something? Uh, I'll hold it. Okay, so the reason why I would say he's wise is because creating everything with intricacy, with precision, with order, that requires wisdom. Yeah. But was everything made with precision and wisdom? I, I would. A lot of things. Yeah, I, I would argue so. And the reason being, uh, because the, the argument that some people would, would claim was, oh, this thing, like, I'll give you an example. Yeah, a lot of things don't work out on Earth. That, that we know of. I'll give, you, I'll give you an example. Like, when I was doing biology A level, uh, we came across a term called junk DNA. Junk DNA. Junk DNA, yeah. yeah. So it was DNA that. Did nothing. Well, we, we said it didn't do anything, but now um, the more we know about genetics, we've discovered that that actually switches on and off genes and they now, they've now retracted that term as well of junk DNA. The yeah. appendix yeah. that was seen as something it stupid. Do <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's argument from ignorance. Um, and because we're, we're, we're limited beings, what we do is we base anything that we come across in science based on induction. So induction is based on our limited observation, yeah. which is constantly subject to change. So we can't necessarily say that, oh, because we don't know what X thing does, therefore it doesn't, um, th therefore there's no, yeah, there's no wisdom behind it. Okay, so. So I would say in order to be intelligent, wisdom follows. Because just being intelligent without wisdom is pretty pointless. Right, but it's not impossible. Can you give me? Can it's, it's not impossible. Like but suppose there's some all-knowing, all-powerful God who just does random stuff. <laughs> How do we know he didn't just say, "Oh, like let's make Earth and let's design the human body in this wonderful way without the heart on the hands or whatever you said," and design this all wonderfully, and then I'm just gonna go do random stuff elsewhere just because I can. Like, there's a big universe out there with ostensibly nothing. So I'm going to answer what an Oxford professor answered once. Uh, so when this question was somewhat posed to him, he said three points. He said the fact that there is uniformity. Um, there were three things he said: uniformity, regularity, and stability. Yeah. Yeah. And the example that he used was the mere fact that I can hold my glove out. Yeah. And my glove is not floating away, it's not randomly combusting, it's not just being sucked into the Earth's gravity, indicates that there is a level of consistency, there is a, a, le a level of uniformity, regularity and stability in nature for us to even do science. So for us to say, uh, so I guess that would be a response to your thing that if things were random, then we wouldn't even be able to do well, science. I did not say everything was random. I know, I know, I know. But what I'm saying is that there's enough in our universe for us to live our daily life, enjoy I, our life. Yeah. I can agree with all of this, but I'm just saying that to me does not prove that God or this initial source is wise and doing everything with wisdom. It just mm -hmm. means this earth was created with wisdom. Right. right? So, so you accept that he would use wisdom to create earth. Well, maybe, maybe there's still something on Earth we haven't discovered yet that was not created with wisdom. I'm just saying, I guess, this to me is not a proof of its accuracy. It's a, it, what you're saying is consistent with a God who is wise, but it's not, in my opinion, it's not convincing me that it must be that way. Okay, but, so, so that's fine, we can come back to that. But is it, are you saying that there's any issue with it being wise? I do not have a problem, if there is a wise God, that is totally cool, I'm down with that. No, would it, would it make sense to you, the fact that it's intelligent, powerful, independent, would it be inconceivable for you to consider it as wise? No, I'm I have, it's definitely conceivable. I'm just saying I'm agnostic for a reason, which is I have not proven this. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, wisdom is the thing that, that you're saying is the Well, you've done issue. a pretty good job on most of the others in wisdom, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, wisdom is the thing that's so the obstacle at the moment, yeah? yeah. Okay, let's, let's, let's break down wisdom a little bit then. So, if we're looking... 
Uh, do you want to ask if she's okay because she's your mother? I don't want to keep her in the cold. Yeah? Let me know. Are you okay, yeah? Because I said, are you okay? Yeah, yeah. When you guys need to leave, uh, just let us know. I don't want to hold you. We're good, right? Right, okay, yeah, fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Because if my mum was here, you know what I mean? <laughs> Seeing you reminds me of my own mum. Uh, we're talking about wisdom. So we believe there is, or we've talked about there being humans dependent on each other, that if there is some God, that God is independent, is intelligent. Uh, did I miss one? Yeah, so independent. Powerful. powerful. Uh, did we talk about powerful? Power, power. Oh, uh, we did talk about. Not, did we say all powerful or just powerful? Just power. Just power. Immeasurable. He has he immeasurable has power. power, yeah. Power, intelligent, and we're on wisdom now. So, so, so wisdom would be putting things yeah. in their right place. Sure. Yeah. So, I think when we when we look at the way design is, mm -hmm. just look at the human body. Yeah, we got the human body. Yeah. Inside it are organs. Yeah. Inside the organs, we have tissues. Inside the tissues, we have cells. Okay. Inside the cells, we have organelles. Yeah. Inside the organelles, we have gene chromosomes. No, I, I can agree. It's incredibly detailed. And so, so that's why I'm saying putting things in the right place. Uh, I, I guess I'd already covered this before, but I just wanted to double check the mere presence of food webs and how they are intricately related, even as uh, organism, even something as small as an atom. When you look at the way the nucleus is, the protons and the neutrons and the electrons, then you've got the leptons and the bosons. And when you look at the way all of these things have been put in the right place for life to exist, for life to be present, that indicates wisdom. Because wisdom is putting things in the right place. If things were not in their right place, then that argument could have been made that, you know what, things aren't in their right place, things are all over the place, things are chaotic. If you know, one one minute the queen pops up there, the next one, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry guys, let this pass and then I'll respond. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Have you guys been Winter Wonderland? So I've heard mixed reviews about it. It's at the top of my list. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Right. So the, the comment was that the human body is created with such detail and so articulately that this is consistent with a story where God is wise. Is that the comment you're making? Not necessarily. Okay. What, what I'm saying is that if wisdom is defined as putting things in their right place, yes. and a case study of that is a human being, yep. and the human being, uh, by looking at our physiology, uh, even if you take other things around us, when you look at the physiology of those things, it indicates that things have been put in their right place for them to produce functionality and a purpose that indicates wisdom. Okay, so I, I can agree that this is consistent with a story of wisdom, but I'm going to ask you if there's another possible explanation, which is, suppose this powerful, intelligent God is still subject to laws of physics and cannot break these laws of physics, and thus created Earth using some limited ability, and those laws of physics naturally resulted in the evolution of humankind to how we are today. Is it possible that this is consistent with what we're observing, but not necessarily a result of wisdom of God? The only issue with that would be that what we know of the Big Bang is the, the beginning of time and space. And we believe 
the necessary being has to be outside of time and space because time and space are those things that limit it. And because we agreed at the beginning that the necessary being is independent, it's not limited um, or dependent on anything. So, well, okay, sorry, yeah. I'm interrupting you. Yeah, so yeah go ahead. Can this independent being cannot change the laws of physics or can? No, the independent being is not dependent on the law of physics. He can change the laws of physics, of course. So I'm not, I'm not saying... So the, the laws of physics just exist. And so what if the ind this independent being just created some basic form of life on Earth and those laws of physics result in an evolution and the current humankind we observe today? Is that possible? So you're saying, has this necessary being put certain things in place yeah. that we are seeing today? Right. Yeah, that's that's one of the things that we do believe. We don't okay. believe that the the necessary being would have to physically be tinkering with every little thing. Right. It's some things can be created, and and but but there is a sense of maintenance as well. Okay. Yeah, maintenance. Otherwise, um, yeah, it, it would fall in that deistic belief right. in God, which is this necessary existence created everything and like. Uh, a wind-up toy, everything is just kind of, just doing its thing. Plays out. Yeah. Okay, so I, as I, I'm kind of repeating myself, I can accept that the observations on Earth are consistent with some wisdom in God, but it is also possible that there are other actions by God that are not wise, right? Like what? I don't know what they would be, but it's, is it possible? Given this, like we're saying, we have a case study that implies God is wise, but we are not observing all of God's actions. Thus, how do we know they're all wise? Mm -hmm. what, what I'm saying is that we're using the scientific inquiry here, which is induction. So induction, just like with any science that we're doing, um, whether it's you know coming up with vaccines, yeah. whether it's coming up with you know um, uh, you know cures or whatnot. Are you saying no, no, given the observable evidence, we should conclude that God is wise? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying the in in science we use induction, okay. and then we we perform experiments, and then once we've done enough, we say the inference to the best explanation is. X. Okay. So I, I, I can accept if your if your claim is the best explanation is that yeah. God is wise, that's fine. But it is also possible that we have not yet learned. There's more things still to learn. That's what I would say. That's fine. Yeah. So I guess what I'm trying to say to you, just like with everything else, we say the inference to the best explanation is that copper conducts electricity. That you know the forecaster said that it's going to rain. Or <laughs> Yeah, I hope not. Um, yeah. So, so the inference to the best explanation, yeah, was this. But, but, but then I would also appeal to my original point, which was that if if we believe that this necessary being is intelligent, is powerful, it has will, wisdom, then then I would argue. But again, we don't have to stick on this point. Uh, I would I would argue that. Everything that has now resulted from this necessary being is a result of wisdom. Now just because just because we don't understand it or we have a certain expectation of it. I'll give you an example. Somebody may look at a knife and say that's not a wise invention at all. Completely and utterly unwise. But somebody else that forages for berries in the forest or even my mum who wants to peel an apple for me, she would understand and appreciate the use. Yeah, yeah. So, so again, that, that could be subject to a person's understanding. Or a cat would not understand and appreciate a Wi-Fi router. It would very happily urinate on there. Yeah. Yeah? But if I saw my cat urinating on my router, it's not going to be a happy day for me. Right. You know what I mean? Because I understand the complexity of the Wi-Fi router. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, is um, the, the, the argument from ignorance that just because we may not conceive something to be of certain use or we may not think of it to be wise doesn't necessarily mean it's wise. But I, I, I grant your premise, which is that the inference to the best explanation is wisdom. Um, and then we can kind of proceed on from there. But and the wonderful thing now, Michael, is 
the four characteristics that I've given the necessary existence is pretty much the Islamic definition of God. So you are in line with the Islamic definition of God. So then moving on, wisdom, one thing that I would argue here is if we accept that inference that the best explanation is God or the necessary existence who we uh, deem to be God, to be wise, it's unwise to create things with no purpose whatsoever. Would you agree with that? If not, feel free to give me an example. Well, what, what is, we need to define what purpose is. Purpose... Uh, I, mean, I, I, can say, I can create something that you function, think has no function. purpose, but for me it's entertaining. But that's, that's a purpose. Right. So function, so, I guess. So, so, so GTA 6, I guess. Yeah, that was in social media. A lot of people have issues with that, but a lot of people are saying, you know what, that's, that's going to be fun. Yeah, so it fulfills the purpose for which it was created, which is to entertain people. Can you use the money from GTA in shops? Of course not. Can you use it to, you know, get married to somebody? I, I haven't come across a situation in which that's possible. So I, there, is, there is a purpose. So to simplify purpose, let's just link it to functionality. So there necessarily needs to be a function, wait, function of like our life on earth? What are you talking about? Yeah, so what I'm saying is, my, my, my point to you was, you can't be wise and create something with no purpose. Uh, I'm actually going to disagree with you on that one. How, You're fantastic. What, so functionality is your definition of purpose? Mm, it's a very simplistic way what of if, us. What if yeah. this wise God just got bored and was like, let me just experiment and create something very well designed just because I can? Is that impossible? But that's what I'm saying. For a, for a wise creator to just do things for no reason whatsoever, no purpose whatsoever, it goes against wisdom. I'll give you an example. If my professor comes into the lecture hall, we've got exams coming up, and he starts doing a break dance, and then I raise my hand thinking, you know what, maybe this has got, uh, this is an analogy. He wants to teach me something. Yeah. He's doing a Mr. Miyagi on me, yeah? yeah, yeah. So I want to find out, <laughs> wax on, wax on, particles off, or what, what? no, he's doing one of those ones. Yeah. And I ask him, sir, what was that? He was like, no reason. No, no, not even that. You don't even dignify me with the last thing. Like because I can. Right. Would my impression of him would be that he is a wise professor that understands I've got exams coming up. He's intelligent. He knows what's going on. Or would my kind of appreciation of his wisdom go down because of him doing a random action? Well, obviously yeah. in that context, that is not wise. But again, consider the same professor in his office at his computer supposed to be doing research. And he's just like... I'm really curious what these data look like. I'm not going to write a research paper. I just kind of want to play around with it just because I can. But, but, but do you see though, uh, this is what they say of child rearing as well. The best way that a child can learn is through play. So play is with the purpose of learning because what you're doing is you're finding out where all the bits go. But what I'm arguing is if there is immense intelligence of this necessary being, the necessary being doesn't need to tinker with things because that would that would assume that there is lack of intelligence because somebody but, he, yeah. but he's just entertaining himself <laughs> but but entertaining yourself would but entertaining yourself how though how would that how, how can we see something that is I don't know, maybe God is laughing at us right now thinking about this like they're so stupid they're actually trying to think about this the, 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 the only way God would be laughing yeah uh, would be that you know there are people that actually don't believe that I exist they they, they actually believe that they they came from nothing that there was no order this this maybe, is maybe people believe and just got it completely wrong and he thinks that's funny too I, the, the thing with that is that would mean that the, the, the creator is manipulative. Or yeah. just has a good sense of humor. A, a, a sense of humor, but imagine creating something and not putting that thing in place. I would argue that there is enough 
evidence, there is enough faculties that we have to determine. I'll give you an example. One of those faculties or one of those knowledge that all of us have is called the innate disposition to believe in God. Yeah, Justin Barrett, yeah, yeah he, yeah. yeah, the University of Oxford, he, he c conducted a sociological experiment uh, of, of, over many years, many countries, and he concluded that we are innately dispositioned to believe in a God. Historically, yeah, most cultures have always believed in a God, yeah, or even, yeah. Not, even if a person is left in the forest, yeah. even if a person is alienated from society, they would believe in a creator of sorts. Yeah. So, bearing that in mind, and then when a person looks at, say, a butterfly, a sunflower, when a person sees system, order, a person concludes that I didn't just come from nothing, I came from something and then that journey begins. So I guess Michael, what I would argue was the, 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 the creator, if he creates us, he's given us a purpose to recognize him, to know him and we have certain weaknesses and we, we rely upon him. It doesn't make sense for him to be laughing at our misery. <laughs> <laughs> it would make sense for him to be assisting us during our misery because that is more fitting of a wise God, uh, of an intelligent God. I'll give you an example. Fitting and makes sense doesn't mean it has to be that way though. It makes sense, but it, but then we come I, back to the I, inference to the best explanation. I, I can agree it makes sense, but that doesn't mean it's true. No problem. <laughs> but what I'm saying, Michael, is that let's just say me as a human being, yeah. with, with my limited understanding, limited wisdom, definitely, um, a lot of things yeah. got wrong, but let's just say I'm with my kid. Yeah, yeah? he's he's doing something that is detrimental to him, mm. like really detrimental. Right. I'm like, <laughs> what a prat. <laughs> Sometimes you do need to let kids make mistakes because that's how they learn. You do. But, yeah. But to a limit. Right. Right. And if you if you're seeing how these these guys just, I mean, not not getting overly political so here. Now, you, now you're talking about God being good. Yeah. So now you got into that whole intelligent, powerful, good. But but here's here's going to be the difference here um, with with the stance that you're used to with regards to Christianity. We don't believe he's all good. Oh, he's not all good. No, no, no. Oh. We don't say all. We don't say all good because we believe God has other characteristics as well. Mm. All good would imply that that's it. Doesn't it make sense that God would be good? Going it, no, 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 no. It would make sense for God for God to be good, for yeah. God to be wise for God to be loving, but to only say that this one characteristic encompasses him, that's false. Because in order to be just, sometimes you, like you said, you have to let somebody make a mistake. Yeah. You have to let a child cry. Okay. But then you, a person would say that is not a good mother. Right. But she is a good mother, but that woman or that mother, oh, <laughs> yeah. well, or, or, or that, that um, mother, is you know she's loving yeah yeah she's she's being just right. she's she's being merciful etc etc yeah yeah that's fantastic isn't it? Right, is that is that was that bad yeah, it was too bright. okay okay so so in that sense yeah yeah <clears throat> so i guess what i'm trying to say is that if, if you look at the inference to the best explanation and you're like what best suits the situation i agree with you there is conversation that can be had about the the branches that you said and we can explore those it's fantastic yeah and, and i like the fact that you brought it up but if we because i don't know if i'm going to see you again if i knew that yeah so if i knew you coming next week then we could have put certain things on ice and said let's get back to them sure. but because i know i'm going to, only going to see you once yeah. i want to kind of give you like a coherent cohesive picture all right so you got something to go away with and yeah. then that maybe you can supplement later. So I'll leave in a minute, but I'll, I'll listen to your closing statement and then I'll get out of here. Wicked, yeah. wicked. So then if we accept those things, which you said that resonate with you, and I agree with you that there are certain issues by saying that God is all good, you know, he loves everybody and this, there's certain issues with that. Yeah. But even before we get into that, we have accepted in this conversation there has to be a necessary existence. It has certain characteristics. Those characteristics um, or qualities are that which Muslims believe that to be of God, um, then my argument would have been that it's not befitting of a wise God to create human beings and just leave us. It would, it would necessitate or it would suit God to communicate and build that bridge of us. Merry Christmas! Oh, thank you. So uh, for, for us, for, for that bridge of knowledge, of us to gain that knowledge from God and how to live an effective life because 
although the argument that you probably would have given, because I'm on times two mode now, um, would be that um, you know there are certain things that we can intuit, and I, in, intuit, and I would agree with you, but not everything can be intuited, and and that's why there is in, in morality there is such a disjunct, such a disagreement. I mean, you look at, for example, the Israel-Palestine um, issue that's going on, yeah, even the arguments pertaining abortion, even the uh, arguments pertaining LGBT, you know, these are moral arguments and there is no moral consensus. So this argument that, you know, no, we have everything that can be intuited, it's actually I don't think that's I don't think that's accurate. There are certain things that we need guidance from uh, from this all knowing to to kind of assist us in this. <clears throat> and then the argument would have been which of the books makes the most sense. Yeah. And before I leave you, uh, I'm just gonna you know just fast fast forward. So what makes the Quran different? You probably would have said different books make different claims. I would argue that the Quran, well, one of the things that the holy book has to have is preservation. Yeah, if a holy book comes from God and it's no longer that book from God, then how can you rely upon it for your salvation? It's a weak document, it's unreliable. And I would argue that the Quran from the ancient religions is perfectly preserved. And the three ways that you can measure it to be perfectly preserved, and again, we're being filmed, you can check these later on as well, is number one, a live language. The Quran is in Arabic, it's just a live language, it's top five spoken languages in the world. Old Testament is in Hebrew, not a live language. Jesus spoke Aramaic, not a live language. Um, even Greek is not necessarily a widely accessible live language. So we've got live language, we've got um, memorization. Quran is the only ancient book which has been memorized from cover to cover from children as young as six. So this is part of you know the Islamic culture to memorize holy scripture and I would argue that if all the scriptures are burnt and destroyed the Quran can be yeah can be written word for word and that's something that you, know, you can explain to a 10 year old a 20 year you don't need like a degree or a PhD in theology or philosophy to understand this I can explain to an average person that look this is how the Quran is preserved and the third thing would be uh, manuscripts we have manuscripts that have been carbon dated like the manuscript the oldest manuscript we have of the Quran is in the University of Birmingham and it's been carbon dated by the University of Oxford you can google this when you get home BBC so the, 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 the Bible, the Old Testament doesn't claim this, the New Testament doesn't claim this, the Vedas doesn't claim this. So this is what makes the Quran stand out from the other books. And then the other thing would have been that we would have engaged with prophecies, like what prophecies are the Prophet made? And then you could have told me some prophecies and we could have kind of discussed about that. Because if somebody claims to be a Prophet, there needs to be ways that you can... If I tell you a prophecy, Michael, and you're somebody that, again, you don't want to fall within that circularity of, oh, okay, you've heard that from a guy called Mohammed, a uh, guy, not the prophet, a guy called Mohammed, and he heard it from a guy called Ahmed, he heard it from this guy and that guy. And then I would understand that you're saying that, look, it's just within your religion, frankly. So there is a prophecy that's actually in the Quran, yeah, of the Byzantines that they would win between six to nine years. It's in the Quran and at that time the Byzantines were losing but then this prophecy has been chronicalized by somebody called Theophanes. Yeah, it's not a Muslim, in fact he was a Christian and it's in the Chronicles of Theophanes who's verified this prediction of the Quran taking place. He didn't mention that it was something that, you know, it's true because of the Quran. He's verifying that this took place, that the Byzantines did indeed win. So although the prophecy is in the Quran, it can be cross-checked and cross-referenced by a non-Muslim source. There's also small ones that the Quran said that this individual, the Quran pretty much said that he's not going to accept Islam. He was alive. He was actively working against Islam. His name was Abu Lahab. Yeah. All he had to do was say, okay, so the Quran says, I'm not going to accept Islam. He accepts it though because, for, yeah, I guess. Do you see? Yeah, yeah. But he didn't. Yeah. He didn't. It didn't even occur to him and he didn't, yeah. yeah, he didn't even survive till the conquest of Mecca, which everybody pretty much accepted that Islam at that time. So it's like the author of the Quran, we believe to be God, knew that he wouldn't survive till the conquest of Mecca. So then I would have talked about prophecies and then, um, yeah, so the Quran and the prophecies and then I would have, 
kind of made the argument and then you know uh, you could have looked into it and then hopefully we could have you know um, uh, spoken again however I do have social I'm on social media I have something called smile to Jannah Jannah is Jannah yeah Jannah is J-A-N-N-A-H which is paradise that's my YouTube channel right. smile to Jannah uh, no this will probably okay. be on smile to Jannah extra all right cool. yeah I'll go find it. yeah so it's gonna be on smile to Jannah extra cool. and uh, on if if you do have any questions or you want to talk or whatnot afterwards have a listen have a look at the things that I said and um, do, do you live local or I you just, local, yeah. okay then just message me we we'll just off camera we just meet up for a cup of coffee and then we just bounce off each other and can if I, something intrigues you I'm gonna step out yeah but that's fine yourself. really thank nice you. to meet you Michael right, you just, okay yeah I'll take the microphone thanks thank you okay. sorry for keeping you for so long okay. <laughs> can I? yeah Zishan nice to meet you enjoy the rest of your day <laughs> Can I, can I ask you a question please? Of course uncle, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. What's your name? Vernon. Vernon, nice to meet you. Sorry, Sorry. Vernon. You're right. Forget, forget, forget pictures. Yeah? Yes, yes. Is it okay if I take a picture? Yes, certainly. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Vernon, are you Muslim? No, I'm okay. not related. Okay, thank you for being so patient because the you reason, probably you probably had some stuff that you probably maybe disagreed with, but thank you for being patient. Well, and I haven't, I, I have, I, I haven't disagreed with anything. Okay, fantastic. What I, what I, what I find extraordinary about some of the things you're saying, it makes me want to ask you a question. Okay. Do you think that mankind, that we all, yes, can have balance? Harmony, love, and peace. Do you think we can have these things without religion? No. I don't think so. I want you. I want you to think about that. I have. Uh, no, 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 no. no. Yeah. It, it's important that you think about it because I feel. I feel very strongly. That can I clip this on you? Is that okay? You can do if you wish. To. Okay. Go ahead. I feel strongly that if man is to take the life of another man, I think that man life, that man is doomed to eternity. I don't think that that man can progress or evolve as an intelligent being. So for that reason, I, 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 I believe that mankind would be much better off without religion because in every religion, every religion, and everyone that God has ever spoken to, or said that God has spoken to them, they have committed all sorts of atrocities against mankind. And I find it extraordinary that we, I mean, I don't have an education, and that's the truth, see? But I rely on what little intelligence that God gave me when I was created, I rely on that. And I sincerely believe that there is no way, we look at religion, religion to me is like a tree. And then they create all the, and the branches are, is all other forms of religion that's created around that tree. And every single one of them, every single one of these religions, if you challenge them, they cannot, they cannot, um, they accuse you of wrong interpretation of my interpretation but they can never get them the pulpit and speak the truth because if you have to speak the truth you have to speak about the atrocity of the God and those who follow that now you may you may not you may not commit an offense and a violent offense against someone else nevertheless nevertheless you are literally trying to convert others to, to, to people who has done so and I don't really understand that. You said your name's Vernon, yeah? Yes. I haven't had, had that name in a long time, Vernon. It reminds me of um, a Harry Potter character, that's how I'm going to remember it. Okay, so Vernon, I, I, I appreciate your concern and it's definitely a concern that you're not the only one that's raised this, um, the, the problem of evil. Yeah. Um, do you do you believe in God? 
No, I know there is a God. I don't believe in it. There is a distinct, there is a distinct difference between believing and knowing. As we are indoctrinated and conditioned, we, we find ourselves locked into systems of belief. But what is a belief? It has no foundation because it changes. Take your religion, for example. There's a gentleman who had an experience in the cave. From that experience, a book was written. But out of that book that was written, there's another thousand books that's written of the same thing, yeah. with little different different state inside of it. So one cannot really actually tell which one is the correct book. It's the same as it's the same as Christianity, and I think Christianity. Do you I believe that the books are the? That there's only minor differences in the books. Well, you have minor differences, but you should not have minor differences. My idea, my idea. Of no, no. Uh, like the Quran compared to the Vedas, compared to the Old Testament. Do you believe that all the books have minor differences or major differences? Major differences. Yeah, yeah. I agree because I, they I have thought major you said, differences, yeah. but they should not have major differences. If you have the Word of God, yes, then every book should have exactly the same thing. I agree with. If you. it comes from the Word of God, I agree with. And if you. if if we don't find that, then it means that there is a mind. There's a problem. There's a mind somewhere that is distorting everything and conditioning us. Because when I came here about 20 years ago, I, I, dis, I, I decided I decided not to come for the simple, not to come back for the simple reason is what I observe here is that there is a conflict of emotion that goes on. You have Christian on one side, Islam on another side, and they have this ridiculous argument about who is right and who is wrong and who is the real God and who is the wrong God. It's so crazy, I don't understand it. But Vernon, bear, bear one thing in mind as well. Just because there's difference of opinion, that doesn't mean... I'll give you an example. What If somebody says, it's a very crude example, I don't want to insult your intelligence, but it's just for a simple one for our audience. If somebody says one plus one is two, someone says one plus one is a carrot, someone says one plus one is a triangle. Now just because there are various opinions, that doesn't now mean that because there's very varying opinions that the question is wrong, um, that there isn't one answer, that we can't sit down and we can't find out the answer. Yes, I agree with you. There is a decorum that we need that, that needs to be had. For example, if we just take, turn our attention towards there, there are certain shouting matches that take place. There are certain people that get physical with each other. There are certain people that get very aggressive with each other. I will actually join hands with you and we would go to the other side of the park to speak and engage with those people that genuinely are interested. Like, like you saw the, the conversation that I had with Michael, a, a very you know, honorable, a respectable uh, discussion. You saw I was very open as well. Uh, anything that he said, you know, we were having that discussion. We were trying to reach uh, an, an agreement and consensus using something that is benchmark, like logic, reasoning, something that we agree with uh, at the beginning. Somebody else might agree on a different criteria, but I think that's what it is. But why yeah. should we? Why should there be a different type criteria? That's the difference. That's the thing that fascinates me. I agree with you. I very, think the criteria needs to be it's, one. It's very confusing. Yeah. You understand? And, and and because of that, we have violence and we have emotional arrogance and all the likes of that because of all these variations. On one subject, one man, one profit, one profit, or a few profits, or whatever it may be, and yet you have all these different conflicts of emotion going on over it. My, there are, there are about two different two thousand religions on the planet, and there's only one that is the true religion. That's the one you belong to, or the one I belong to, or the one that he belongs to. And we take what they tell us, and, and we believe it. We accept it as our truth, and then we want to defend it. Here's, here's the here's the thing with that. You have something. You have something with you. I don't know what it is, but you have the ability to understand and to search to seek the truth or understanding of everything. I have an understanding of life based, based, based solely on experiences. And I happen to know that God is unconditional love. Unconditional love 
cannot judge. It's impossible. If it decides to judge, it becomes unbalanced. That is to say, it must love Hitler exactly the same way as it loved to say. He cannot, he cannot make a choice of one and not the other. And that's what this God that we are talking about every day, that's what he did. The first murder that occurred on this planet, the Cain and Abel, that it was that God that caused that to happen. Do you believe we have free will? Oh yes. So we then, have we have free will, but we are also conditioned. We are also indoctrinated and con to, to 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 be servile towards whoever it is that's indoctrinating us. So the first person to commit the murder, who is he indoctrinated by? Very simple. I was going to make that example. You, you have two kids. You love both of them. So both of them give you a present. One gave you a lamb as a sacrifice. One gave you a branch, a twig. What would you do as a father? You would love them both. But no, he decided to love the one that gave him the lamb more. The other one becomes jealous. The other one, and this happened, we see this doubt on, on our plan this, today. If, if you do that to children, the one that you ignore will go, it always go back and he can suffer and become very volatile as he grow up because he, he's lacking in love. So he, the other one wanted God love. So he thought, if I kill him, I, God would then have no choice but to love me. Yeah. You've, you've made some... It's simplified, yeah. I know, but it's it's what is read. I read that. Yeah. You've, you, you've made some fantastic points. There's a number of them, so I was just trying to remember them so I can answer them one by one. When, when you say that there is religion, but people hijack that religion, then what you're saying is that, you know what? Put that to the side and just go with humanity. Go with the things that we have in common. Go with the common things. I, I would say that it's human beings in general. The mere fact that we have free will, free will means we have choice. Now when you say we are conditioned and we are forced, I would argue the opposite. Despite being a Christian country, the majority of this country, the adherents are actually atheists. Even when you go to other countries, like even countries in which religion is very staunch, you'll still see the, the, the kind of leaning towards Western ideals, Western principles, dressing in a certain way, watching certain movies. So I would argue that yes, the danger is certain kind of ideologies, but I would turn your attention somewhere else and say that the ideologies are actually the isms and schisms and the most dangerous one that we're seeing is actually liberalism. Liberalism which is actually telling us to worship the soul and worship ourselves, the individual. And oh, why is this right? Why is this wrong? There is no right and wrong. It's whatever you feel that's right and wrong. So when Can you, you just stop there, sure, because that's that's very unusual coming from a religious person. You are correct. There is no right and there is no wrong. And there, and and that can be. You can use an analogy as to say that um, in order for me to know a thing, I must first know its opposite. So if I'm to know good, then what you decide, what you regard as evil or wrong is important because without that I would not be knowing what is good it's like what is hot how would I know what's hot if cold does not exist how would I know what's short if cold did not exist so you can use that analogy as well but what I Pardon? Yeah. one of the things that we first must try to understand is that we are arrive on this planet as a blank tape, just like a computer, you buy a new computer. Whatever you put in that computer is what you, what you would find, it's what you put there. It's the same as a child. Every single, when a child is born and is taken home, every move is recorded. Every smile is recorded. Every word you say is recorded. Everything, the child takes it in just like that. If it speaks a, 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 a that language different from English, the child would end up doing the same thing. So whatever is put into that child's mind, brain, is what that child becomes. So then, do you believe there's no right and wrong? 
No, no you I don't, don't believe it. No, okay. because we need, we need, we need. If we are to know what is right, then we must know the opposite of right. Where do we get that from? The knowledge of right and wrong. Well, the knowledge of right and wrong is, is, an, is, is an indoctrination. It, it starts with this God, the God that, that, that people on this planet believe. That's right. where it all starts. He See? tells you, he, he comes here because he accuses us of being sinners. And we don't believe that though. Well, I'm just saying, yeah. in the Christian thing. And he decided that he's going to kill us left, right and centre, genocidal against us to get rid of sinners, but he must have failed because we are more sinners today than we have ever been before. Mm -hmm. So that's a failure. So if I take the Christian reality, once you have that idea, once you read that, then you throw it in the gutter. I made that decision when I was 12. No, I, when I was 12 I contemplated it. And when I was 14 I made that decision. And I made it because I went to a cousin of mine who was four years older, and I told him that I, I, I've always, been, as a child, I was an observer. So I listened to everything. No, no sentence was mentioned in my community unless the word God was in it. Mm -hmm. So I decided that I didn't want to have anything to do with this God. But I was terrified because I didn't know what he would do to me. But I went to see my cousin and I was explaining it to him. And during this explanation, I'm talking to him. I asked him a question and he said, one does not question the word of God. Well, I will never support anything that if but I can question these, it. These, these are experiences that you've had. These are things that you've been told. It doesn't necessarily mean that that has to become your reality now. It doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, just because you've had a few negative experiences that, you know, you, you have to put it all to the side. It just means that we need to, we need to kind of associate. I'll give you an example. If I enter a shop in which everyone's smoking, even if I'm not smoking, you know, I'm going to come out leaving of smoke. Yeah, so that is correct. Yeah, so I, I agree with you in the sense that we are a product of our environment. But I, I also want to put forward as well that now with the world being a global village and the books at our disposal, analyses at our disposal, the social media, the internet, that we can search up any book ever written, access libraries, access knowledge. So I don't think that that case now that is that indoctrination um, that that we have to be stuck with that indoctrination i think there's enough uh, knowledge available to us for us to make up our own minds and that's literally what we're doing here i'll give you an example like if it was i'm not saying you accused me of this because um, i think you saw me favorably that's why you approached me here i would rather have a conversation with somebody present my questions to them, present my view to them and have them challenge it. Because the Quran does the same thing, Vernon. The Quran says, produce your proofs if you are truthful. Prophet peace be upon him said, asking good questions is part of your knowledge. Yeah? Asking good questions, sorry, is half of your knowledge. And the Quran again invites us, if you don't know, ask those who do know. And because you mentioned quite a few things and they, they were very good points and they, 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 they are points that a lot of people have issues with, which is that certain people have hijacked religion for their own nefarious causes and reasons. And I can give you case studies of that. After they invaded Iraq, Saddam's army, they were the Baathists, they had hijacked the religion and that's how ISIS came about. It was a hijacked version to promote its own political ideology because Karen Armstrong then gave a few examples of people that were in ISIS's custody and they were saying that when we asked for the Quran, they had no Quran. When it was Salah time, they were not praying. So they were not a religious minded people. You might say, okay, that's one religious example. I'll give you a secular example. Stalin, yeah, Joseph Stalin of the Marxist Lenin, Lenin ideology. He actually suppressed and scientists during his era were oppressed. They were oppressed. They, you had some, you know, weird... You mean in the people, you meant the people? Yeah, yeah so um, amongst his um, constituency, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The people that he was ruling over, he wanted certain scientific principles to be put forward, even though they had very little evidence, like, like Lysenkoism. Yeah, uh, amongst others, even his even his knowledge of evolution, 
it was a distorted version that the rest of Europe didn't necessarily agree with. Lysenkoism, the rest of Europe and the rest of the countries didn't necessarily agree with. However, because he wanted to forward his political ideology, same I can say with Hitler as well, who was a practicing atheist rather than anything else, uh, somebody that favored, you know, Frederick Nietzsche and evolution. But even the people that favor Nietzsche now, they say he and his party distorted um, Nietzsche's teachings. They distorted um, Darwin's evolution theory. So, so this, Vernon, is what I'm trying to tell you, that we as human beings have free will and it's not going to change that human beings want power, they want control and they want money. This is the base desires of human beings. So if something comes from God, then that it has to be something that controls these things. If we say, look, let's just go to our own principles that we all agree with. I'm telling you, we can't even agree what is a man, what is a woman. <laughs> these are the Western, the heads of Western liberals. You have people sitting in the, you know, the Shura councils of these universities. And I'm telling you as somebody that did, I did a short course on LGBT at Oxford University. I'm telling you what, what I saw in that in those sessions were very problematic. And I'm telling you it's coming top down. It's not even coming up uh, from the bottom up. So what I'm trying to say is that if we don't have objective morality and look, Vernon, I'm telling you, we can agree on certain principles and we can agree that, look, this is more uh, closer to the truth than that. However, we should be able to say that, look, to you, your religion, to us, our religion. Lakum deenukum waliyadeen. This is what the Quran says. Quran doesn't say, oh, a man came down. God had to come into this man to get rid of the sins. No. Vernon, if you standing here were to, you're, you, you claim you're not a Muslim. I'm not religious. Yeah, you're not religious, yeah? Uh, so, if you are not a Muslim, and if I oppress you, no, it, you if I oppress you, okay. and you're not a Muslim, and you pray just something from your heart, and you say, you know, he's God, he has oppressed me, God would listen to your prayer. He would listen to your prayer I, against me. I, I listen, listen. That's one of the things that I disagree immensely with. I think prayer is a few times, and I'll tell you why I think they're futile. I know that there is a creator. When you say futile, do you mean there's useless. no benefit? Useless. No benefit yes, whatsoever. Useless. And I'll, t I'll give you an example of that. Right. But I'll start off this way. I know that, that I know that the creator has a um, is unconditional love. I know that. Where do you know that from, though? If you don't believe in any scripture. One day, one day, I will, we will speak again. Okay. And then you will gradually get to uh, to a different kind of understanding. Okay. Because I only ever speak from experience. I, I'm not. I don't have an education, so therefore I'm not going to try to um, impress you or anyone. However, so, however. So, Vernon, I guess what you're trying to say is you're uneducated. You just have a subjective experience and you want to convince me of... No, 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 okay. no. I don't wish to convince you. Okay. I don't wish to convince anyone. Right. I stand here and I listen to you. Okay. And you were not trying to convince me. Right. I, you've said certain things yeah. that resonate within me. Right. And gave me the feet and I thought that I would like to speak with you. Okay. But the fact is that I am not religious and that would, that would create a kind of problem or conflict because whatever I am saying it's like if I'm challenging your religion but I'm not challenging your Vernon, religion. Look, my name is Ishan, yeah? Yeah. I come here as frequently as I can. Um, now that it's winter, maybe a bit less, but I'm on social media as well. If you watch my videos, you will realize I don't mind people challenging me. So in this conversation, I don't want you to feel that I'm going to get offended or you can't say this or you can't say that. I want you to be yourself. I want you to put your cards on the table so I can see what your cards are and then we can because I, I see you as I, I, a respectable I see you as a respectable elder of mine. I, I've just told yeah. you that I consider praise to be futile. Yes, I'll yes. explain to you. Yes. I'll Sorry. give you an example. Yes. In your religion, you pray I don't know how many times a week. 
but quite a lot. Yes. That much I do know. Yes. I look at all um, what happened in Iraq. Yes. In Libya. Yeah. What happened in Gaza. Yeah. I look at these things and although I'm not there, I know for a fact that everyone that walks on in those country, they pray every single day and then they get blown to pieces. No one answers their prayer and there's a reason for that. And I'll tell you what the reason is. I'll tell you something that you can't accept. We create our experiences. What, 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 what those people experience in Gaza, yeah. what they experience there now, is that they are teaching us. They are teaching us that we are living among demons, you can say, because only demons act like that. And that's what they did. They yeah, only they demons don't the free Palestine. They, they, sac they, they are sacrificing their life so that we might have a better understanding of what is going on. That's how I see it. I think, I think that God, I think, I, I know that God created us. I know that we have a soul within us which is qualitative part of the, of the Creator. And I know that that soul allows us to know what is considered to be right and what is considered to be wrong. I know that every human being on this planet must participate or should participate in religion. I know that they should do things that is wrong because when you do something is wrong, you have that feeling within you. Then you make a choice. Do I want to feel this bad again because of what I've done? And the choice is no, I don't. Vernon, you said that the prayers of the, the people that have been blown to bits, they were not accepted. What makes you think that? What, when I say they're not, they're, they're, they're not praying to be to killed or to be harmed, they're praying, please God, let me live. Please God, don't let my children be hurt. Don't let my children die. But the children die and they're hurt. That's what I mean. So, but you see, I. I've but they also. I, I, they, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I explained to you in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. I explained this to you in the beginning. Yeah. It's very important. That, well, for me, it's important. God does not interfere. He does not participate in our way of life. He remains unconditional love. And if he decided, if he decided to choose this gentleman or that gentleman in preference to you. He becomes unbalanced. He's no longer unconditional love. That is why Jesus said that the Father judges no man. Because if he judge, he can no longer remain unconditional love. So, so would you say like a murderer is, is equal to say a brain surgeon? Well, no, I'm not saying yes, because everyone has a purpose. Everything, everything on this planet is teaching us. So a murderer is as good as a brain surgeon? What would you learn from a murderer? What we learn from a murderer and what we learn from a brain surgeon are two different things, but the fact is we're learning anyway. I'm talking about their goodness though, because you said God loves them. Um, they're, they're the same in the sight of God. Unconditionally. Unconditionally. That they're both the same in the sight of God. Yes. Because, because I, I if don't you think are, so. Well, imagine, think of it. If you are complete, I am. Because if, if you are complete, If a murderer is the same as a brain surgeon, then that's that's big problems then. Well, because who created the murderer? It's not about who created it. It's the, yes, God created both of them, gave them both free will. One chose to murder people, the other one chose to save people. Okay. It's a choice. Yes, of course it is. But nevertheless, both of them are teaching us something. They're teaching us something, what? but one is teaching us the wrong thing. Well, this is an academy down here. Earth is he an can't academy. Be, he can't be as good as the person saving no, people. No, no, no. We can't judge. We can't judge it that way. That's the he problem. Is good. The fact remains is that this is an academy and we are here to learn. So do you think there's something like if you can't judge, do you think there should be no one in the prisons? Well, I think I have given that a thought and I thought to myself, this is that prison is absolutely ridiculous because you go to prison because you get punished for doing something wrong. And then after you die, you get punished by God again. So you can be punished twice. But they don't believe in God. The people putting them in prison. Oh, yeah. the people that put them in prison. Yeah, because it's a secular system, isn't it? Yeah, they don't believe in God. Well, it's a secular system, so they, they, their punishment is based upon a secular system, excluding of God. Well, They're in Europe anyway. My, 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 my way of thinking is that I do not think that evil exists for the sake of punishment. Do you think I, the prison system should be abolished? No one should go to prison. No. 
know anybody can buy a Jewish Torah Christian gospel. I, the only thing that I ever think of prison is that if there is a God that punishes people, then it seems to me it's unfair that a man is being punished twice for a crime. But don't you think it's unfair that a person that doesn't believe in God, they get punished and they are supposed to wait for a punishment in the hereafter when they don't even believe in the hereafter as well? But I, that's an accusation that I don't, I don't think that that's a good accusation because what you're saying to me is... I'm saying the majority of this country is atheist. Yeah, what you're saying to me is that when a, when a person goes to prison... They're going to get judged, That yeah. person does not believe in God. I've no, no, no. I'm saying that the person sending them in prison doesn't believe in God. The, the oh, judge. The person that sent yeah, them, yeah, yeah. the judge. Well, yes. yeah. well, that's a possibility. But then there's lots of people that believe, lots of people that walk about with a religious book, and they do evil things anyway. But you said there's no, there's no necessarily uh, an agreed definition upon what's evil. It's what a person believes to be evil. They're all teaching us something. No, I don't think it's what a person believes to be evil. It, it, the person who believes something is evil, it, to me, is mindless. I, I think that if a person does something that's evil, and if I, I, if I was to experience that, being present when something that happened, it all has to do with how I feel within. Okay, if my father is on the floor, yeah, and I've got my hands like this, and I'm thumping him on the chest, is that good or bad? I have a different way of thinking about life. For example, if I was to walk the road, walk in the road here today, and and a little child was to be knocked down by a car, I am quite capable of walking along like if it never happened. <laughs> I, I know it sounds funny, but but let me tell you. Yeah, go on. As I walked along, I might smile, and the reason that I would smile is because I think, oh, that person <laughs> has arrived here, had her experience or his experience, and they've gone back. That's how I look at it that way. Can you pick them up so they can have a better experience? <laughs> well, I think... That, or just, I think, just tap I, them on the back I and say, look, everything's going to be okay. The goodness of human, the goodness yeah. of a human being, yeah. is that they would go down and they would pick up the child, they would probably cry, they would feel really terrible inside. But my way of looking at it, my way of looking at it is that that child came here to have that experience and that child leaves. So what about the experience of me thumping my dad on the chest? That's frustration. That's really, that has done you something wrong and you want to get the frustration out of you. That's how I see that. So it's bad, yeah? No, I don't see it as being bad. Your dad might see it as being bad. <laughs> you might feel it being bad after, but it's nothing to no, do I with me. No, I think it's good. Oh, you think it's good? Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. So if you think it's good, it's good. And if your dad thinks it's bad, it's bad. Shall I tell you why I think it's good? Just in case you don't think I'm a psychopath. The reason why I said his chest and the reason why I did my hands like this, even though it's not technically the correct way, it was me performing CPR on him. Okay. Because I'm on the phone, I'm on the phone with the paramedics. They said, look, we're going to be there in seven minutes. We want you to give him CPR until we get there, breathe in, breathe in his mouth and, and thump and, him in the and, chest. And humans left to gossip and they pass along and see that and they think, what a horrible man. Yeah. See? No, but you're going to think I'm a good man though. <laughs> well, it wouldn't worry me. I yeah. mean, it's, it depends on you. you you have the, we all have this great ability within us to differentiate what is good and what is bad. And we, what, what is good is what makes us feel good inside. I mean, if I done something what wrong... About, what about if for me to... Um, I don't want to use this word, but if I rape somebody... Yeah. And that makes me feel good. Does that make it good? Well, if it makes you feel good, it's good for you. So it's good. I shouldn't no, be in no. prison for it. Well, whatever, but it's good for you. Yeah. It's not good for him. He might judge you as being horrible. But it doesn't matter his, by his judgment. Well, it doesn't matter. I agree. Yeah. But I'm just saying. Yeah. The fact remains is that you feel good with what you yeah. do and that's it. Yeah. So I, what's wrong with that? So I shouldn't go to prison, should I? Well, I don't know what you should do from what you shouldn't do. No, no, no. I don't, want, okay. well, I don't want to go to prison. Why should they force me to go to prison? That's wrong. Well, it's wrong and um, 
It's wrong to go into prison. I, I don't know. You live. That's the world we live in. We live in a society where that's messed up. If though. we do something wrong, then we we judge by it. I mean, I, I lost my temper with someone once, and you I stabbed went. them. No. Why not? Why not though? I have tried to do that once. <laughs> Just a second. I was about 21 years of age, yeah. and I got into. A, I think with a bloke. Why did you stop though? Why didn't you just... Well, that's that's something that you would have to be... I don't know if you'd be able to understand that. But I'm not here to do things like that. Why not though? Well... If, if, if that person is causing you issues... Do you mind facing the light or like this way? Like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Please. <laughs> so, so if that person was causing you grief, getting rid of him would make you happy. Isn't it worth doing? I am trying. I'm trying to be 100% honest with you. I, I want you to be. And I'm not trying to um, think. What I'm saying to you is, I once had an, a, a confrontation, alteration yeah. with someone, yeah. and I lost my temper, and I got this. We fought a little, and then I picked up this bottle, went like that. Yeah. And as you break it that way, you get two prongs. Yes. And I was. He was down there, and I was over him like that, and I was trying to stab him. Yeah. And I was like that and my hand couldn't move but that i didn't understand that it took me another 20 25 years for me to understand what we what why i couldn't do that you see what i mean mm. i have i have a uh, I have some very unusual experiences in my life. Do you think maybe they were indoctrinations, though? No, no what? No, how? Because subjective they, experiences can no, be indoctrinations. No, 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 nothing to do with indoctrination. Because I, I never, I was too naive, and I never think of things like that. I never even heard the word indoctrination. So, okay, coming back to this example, when you were about to stab the guy, if you had stabbed him, yeah, but your intention was he caused, he took away my happiness. By me stabbing him, he's finished now, I will be happy. Well, I'm contented, yes, I would be. So it's okay then, isn't it? Because I, 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 the story that I was about to tell you is that I lost my temple once. Yeah, yeah. And I put someone in hospital for about yeah. 10 days. Yeah. And um, the police became involved. The person who, who was in hospital, he told the police he didn't know who do it. Yeah. And the police arrested another three people who was present. And they said they didn't, know, they didn't see anything. Yeah. And, and in the end, the police locked them up in the cell. And then the police said to them, you'll stay there until you remember or you see something yeah so they end up saying it was me but my solicitor explained to me that all i have to do is to play not guilty those people that made, that were witnesses what they say does not count because the police put them in a prison in, mm -hmm. into the self to, to get that information out of them so it doesn't count but what i did i was satisfied so i went and said i was guilty and got three years first first offense oh no spent so 13 months no best thing ever happened to me I'm, I'm very lucky like that to me i don't see I, I don't see things like other people do i think going to prison might have been a disappointment but i think every disappointment is for the better and while i was there for those 14 months I think I must have read about 10 books. That's the first time in my life I ever read a book. So Vernon here, if I just, if I started giving you the right and giving you the left here, just because a thought came into me that that would make me happy, would that be good? Would that be, would that be okay? It would be okay for you, but not for me. That's the difference. But it wouldn't matter what you think. What matters is my happiness, right? Yes. It's your happiness. It's so, your life. So it's you okay see, then, isn't you it? Are, well, it's, to you it's okay. Yeah. It might not be okay to everyone else. Well, I don't care about everyone else, though. Well, eh? it's okay for you. What's wrong with that? Yeah. If it makes you feel good, it means you're wired differently. It but, means that you're capable of doing something evil and enjoying it. But, but that's the thing, though. Why, why is it evil? For I didn't say it was evil. Yeah. I said, if you do something that's, that is evil or wrong, and you enjoy it... It's not evil though, is it? Well, you say it's not evil. What are, you, we exist in the planet of duality. That's something that you have to accept. We exist in the planet of duality, and there are those among us who are so supportive.
superior advance, mentally speaking, to we are. They are, able, they are quite capable of having us say, doing things that normally we wouldn't do. Through, by, by, through, through when, 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 you, when you say duality, what do you mean? You mean everything has its opposite, yeah? Well, yes. Well, what is the opposite of a rock? Pardon? What's the opposite of a rock? A smaller rock. It's not the opposite. Yeah, it is. It's smaller. So then it vibrates different. It's totally different. What is the opposite? I don't. I don't think that that is um, a good example. A rock is a rock. That's what I thought. Yeah. So then, what are you going to talk about the opposite of a rock? That's, I mean, that's why I suggested that. that. Yeah. It's quite. A, um, are you teasing me? No, I'm. I'm genuinely curious because if you if, because you said uh, we live in a duality and there's no getting out of that. So no, I, was thinking, oh, I didn't yeah. say there's no getting out of it. Okay. What this planet is a plan this planet is, is an academy. Yeah. It's a place of learning. Trust me. And in order, if we are going to progress and learn, we have we have to experience the opposite because it's through the opposite that allows us to know. And that's why I don't think that evil or wrong exists for the sake of punishment. I think it exists for us. What's the what's the opposite of skin? The opposite of skin. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. What is it? I don't know. Yeah, I can't think of anything. Same with the rock. I can't. These are things because when you said duality, I was thinking, mm, uh, is everything in a duality? Duality. When I refer to duality, I'm referring to the perceptive mind, how we perceive things, and how we react to those things. What do you mean? Well, the way we perceive, you, 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 what we perceive is right. Someone else might perceive that is wrong. So it's how, how we perceive things. What if someone perceives something as skin? What's the opposite of skin? I don't know. So how can they preserve? How can they observe the opposite of skin? I don't know why you, you speak speaking funny, you're speaking kind of weird, I don't know. No, 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 I guess, look, when, when you say everything, the, the point that I'm trying to say is, to, to say that everything exists in opposites and in a duality, I don't think that's a very strong principle. That's why I'm giving you some examples why that challenge that. Why do you think you have religion? Huh? Why do you think you have religion? Because is, I have is religion, I, does religion exist to teach us to be to, to be moral? I, to, I have to make us to make us see the difference between right and wrong, and to ask us to do what is right. Isn't that the reason for religion? The religion for I, I believe religion is for us to know God. Well, for us to know God, but how are you going to know God through religion? How can, how can you know that? You, you can't say, you can't say yeah. I know God, you can say I believe in God. Yeah, no, but you said you don't believe in God, you know God, that was a decision. That is correct, yeah. because I have that experience. So, well, so I, I have the experience, why are you deny my experience? Well, my experiences don't come from the book. <laughs> it does though. No, it doesn't. Because not. you you referenced scripture, you referenced certain frustrations that you had, and the examples you gave were from the Christian faith. You may not believe in it, but you can't say you're not influenced by it. Well, let me explain to you. Let me explain to you so you have a better idea. If I said to you that I know something, okay, it, it means that it's an experience that is in alignment with what I experience. That is to say that I have an experience of this and then you say something and what you say relates to the experience that I have. So in that way it resonates and that allows me to know that what you're saying is, is true because my experience is true. There's, there, there's certain issues with that. Um, for example, a, a child that's born colorblind. That child could be sitting in a class with other people, a teacher's asking him or saying that, look, if somebody can tell me which of these characters is red, they get a cookie. And he can't perceive the color red because he's, his brain can't register the color red. But to him, red is grey. So if he's arguing with the teacher that it's grey, but he doesn't get the cookie, then his, he can't say, look, my, this is what the color red is. Because in order for you to say what the color red is, objectively, it has to match with the experiences of other people.
there has to be a collective here. So when you're looking at, for example, colors, when you're looking at, for example, a child that's brought up in an abusive household in which that child is used to getting beats, for them to be put in a foster home in which they're not getting beats would be very unusual. There have been cases where people have deliberately, when they've grown up, they've sought out abusive partners because that's what they believe to be love. So if a person is given validation of their own subjective experience, Vernon, it's, it's very problematic. You're, you're going to really create disenfranchised, abused individuals that have had very troubled experiences. It's only through the collective experience that we can measure objectively, this is what's correct, this is what's wrong. But I would even argue, even through the collective experience, there are still flaws in that. That's why my final stance is to get something is objectively. Objective morality that comes from God. God tells us this is right, this is wrong. Because as human beings, we will start debating about whether a child can be killed or not. We can be debating about if this person is a man or a woman. We can be debating if we can take something from a child, we can slap a child or not. All of these things will be something that will be up for debate till the end of times. There will be no one agreement. In fact, what you're going to have, Vernon, is not a number of like three, four big islands. You're going to have hundreds and thousands of small, 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 small islands. And this is what the sociologists have said about this generation, the Generation X that we are going through. Because everybody is on their own journey, everyone's looking at their own thing, everyone's an island. That's why when things are going on, people are just walking by. I, I think you're too intelligent, it's <laughs> institutionally speaking. Uh, you know what, in what sense though? Pardon? In, when you well, say the way, the, way, the, way, the way you present yourself, the words that you use, and such shows that... I'm actually anti-institution. Well, it shows that you're anti-institution and that means that you don't really know what, where you're headed because you're anti-institution and at the same time you have an education from the institution. No, because it's like the point that you said beforehand about the police and the prisons. It's a system that we have. Unless, like if I had parents that gave me the option of homeschooling in school or that they were, you know, ahead in that thinking, then that would have meant me being able to escape the system. But because I had parents that were dependent upon the system, I had to go through the system. But that free will then kicked in when I was able to go through the system, I could see the hypocrisies and the inconsistencies that were taking place. Because something that, and you rightly pointed out, if something is from God, it's not supposed to be contradictory. There's not supposed to be inconsistencies in it. And that's what, what I then have looked into pertaining the prophecies of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the Quran. And I have seen that they are consistent with logic, morality, philosophy. When I look at, say, the liberal system that no, I've been also consistent of violence it's, but you don't say that no but what I'm not a pacifist I don't believe that all violence is bad though and neither do you Pardon? I said I don't believe that all violence is bad and neither do you so what's the problem the problem to me is this I do not understand how we are created with intelligence and how we can sit, how we can speak as a human being and say, oh, religion is a good thing. Because if you go through the history of religion, you would find genocide, you would find all things that is quite despicable. Okay, you said that you, you're not academically astute in this. Let me quote you somebody that is. She used to be a nun, she's not a nun anymore, she doesn't follow any religion. Her name is Karen Armstrong. She's written a book called Fields of Blood and she had an interview in which she was saying as well, she's been interviewed a number of times. Her conclusion after going through the Crusades, after going through the World Wars, after going through ISIS, all of these issues, she has concluded that majority if not all of these violences that are lumbered onto religion are not necessarily religion based but they were done for geopolitical sociological power grabbing money these sorts of reasons religion was mainly used as a pawn it was used as, as an object 
for the person in power to utilize it. However, it was not necessarily the religion itself that called for that. For example, the killing of uh, women and children. I can tell you not only the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said it, I can tell you the chain of narration, the accuracy by which we can use testimony to prove and evidence the reliability of that statement. However, now Vernon, if somebody does it, I was a school teacher for six years as well, and I and 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 I can tell you, I can tell you, Vernon, <laughs> I have spent a great deal of time trying to teach children certain principles, certain things, and I'm telling you that you cannot control human beings that have free will. Even as a person of, of power that wants the best for the kids, sometimes, like you said, you have to let people make their mistakes and learn from those mistakes. That's one of the ways of of That's teaching the somebody. Why we're here. But but also the fact that those children, if somebody did that, and somebody said, oh, he was in Zishan's class, he did that. The blame should fall on Zishan. I think that's extremely unfair because I didn't force that child to believe in that. I didn't pressure that child to believe in that. I let that child and I gave them that freedom to explore that concept. I taught them, they understood it, but I've given them that free will to understand and appreciate. If they follow it, that's good. If they don't, then obviously that's, that's up to them. Do you see? But we have that free will. It means, what it means if they don't follow it, it means that they, they're lost. They have their experience. They, 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 they experience. That's what we're all about. We, we, but do Vernon, you know our, our experience. Do you know why we're here? I, I do, because I believe our experience is nothing compared to the knowledge that God has. My experience is only hopefully 60, 70 years, but then I'm going to be gone. God has been, you know, He is. You I'm know, lucky I'm 82, so I'm all right. <laughs> So, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something that you can't accept and then I'm gonna go. I have seen the manifestation of God. I've witnessed from the beginning a pinhead light. And and I've witnessed the, the complete manifestation and everything it felt I felt. Which is I don't know how to explain it. And and then at, at one stage I thought well, I've experienced this before, and then all of a sudden, on completion, there was this love. You can't, well, I don't know how I can talk about it now, but I used to cry and tremble. This, 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 this love, the emotion was so powerful. And then what I discovered lately, is, through my experience, is that when God created, His creation knew all there is to know, because they created because we were a portion. The creation was a portion of God, so they knew all what God knew, and God understood that if if everyone, if all His creation knows what He knows, then every, they would be lacking an experience. So He decided then to create the opposite to who we are, to those that knows. So he, he, he created the opposite. The opposite is what you call demons, devil, Lucifer, whatever. It Why do be. we seek knowledge then, if we know everything? Pardon? Why do we seek knowledge if we know everything? If we know everything, yeah. we'd be lacking an experience. No, but experience and knowledge and are two different and, things. Well, yeah, well, he, he created so that he can have experience. He understood the importance of experience. And experience is, a, is, is to expand, is to expand your... How do you know this? You're going to say through experience again, isn't it? <laughs> Well, you, I have I, to take I, your word for I, I it. I know it. No, well, I have to take your word for it when you refer to your, your to your no, to that's, your prophet. No, I take your word for it. No, but you shouldn't. I though. was not in the cave, so I don't know. No, but I so, you just can, to take. Yeah, yeah, I was sure, not sure. in the cave. I don't know what is written. I don't know if it's true or false. What I know in life is what I experience. That's all I know. But what you said about me is. And my belief is I can evidence those using evidence. So what I'm asking you is what's the evidence that God actually you wants You can't that? use any evidence to convince me because the evidence that you would use comes from a written book. Besides that, you can't say the things that you're saying. Not necessarily. I can give you, I can give you other evidences. The only evidence you can give me is what you experience. No. no. I can give you philosophical evidence, rational evidence. I can give you testimony-based evidence. I can give you... Maybe I'm not a rational guy. 
guy. Maybe I'm not a philosophical guy. But if, if you're not a rational guy, then that's going to obviously make the conversation more difficult, then isn't it? Well, it, the more difficult is but you're, be but, the better. But you're rational enough to understand that it's cold today, you're wearing a jacket. You're rational enough to put your hands in your pocket. So if you're rational enough to follow those basic needs, you're rational enough to understand some of the rational I things. I think those examples that you're giving are quite trivial, actually. I, I, I don't think the conversation we have in, in those examples is completely way out of, what we, out of context. What no, we're talking because about. If, you, if you say you're irrational, yeah? I, it was a, a figure of speech because you were saying I understand, I understand. What I clearly know it's not the case, but what I'm saying is, and I'm merely showing you that, you, if you said that, let's just say, let's just say, uh, I am irrational, then me telling you, for you to decide to put on a jacket, put your hands in your pocket, these are rational choices, made of course by experience also, but it is a sign of an intelligent person, that understands what's going on around him, is able to say, look, if P is Q, P then Q. If it is cold, I will put on a jacket. It is cold, therefore I will put on a jacket. That's logic. Yeah, that's logic, modus ponens, one-on-one. On one. You want me to tell you something about logic? Go ahead. Creation is not logical. God is not logical. Nothing about God is logical. And nothing about creation is logical. And that's the problem that science have on this planet. You see, if they live to be another million years, they will never, ever be able to explain consciousness. You're How do you know that though? Because I do. <laughs> but no, that's not good you, enough. In order for you to know, in order for them to do that, what they what it would take 300 years for them to learn, they can learn that in 10 years. If they were to accept, if they were to accept that there is a creator, but science can't accept that. They can't. They, they have they, everything about them starts from theories to logic. How do you prove that there's a creator? Well, I've seen it. You've seen the creator? Yes. Like in the flesh or in person? No, there's no flesh, no. Experience? Experience. I told you what I experienced. Right, right. I told you that I experienced a manifestation of it. When you say manifestation, break that down for me. Well, the manifestation is that... Um, is this like in a dream? No. Well, that's that's the other thing is that it's like in a dream you say that it, it appears that I was having some very unusual experiences. And then it appears that I was taken to a place. It was like a void. There was absolutely completely darkness. But through this darkness I'll get out. Thank you. Through this darkness there was a pin a pinhead of a light. And I saw I saw that light slowly and gradually manifest until it becomes when it was complete it manifested into like a planet itself of pure life. But that was not important. It's what I was feeling that everything it felt I was feeling what it was going to think. And then at the end of it it allowed me to know what it was an explosion of love that being a human being and what we experience on planet Earth is completely different. It's so powerful that your body trembles and you can cry if you, if you try to speak about it at, in, at that time I couldn't speak about it. If I did, I would tears would come in my eyes. But it never said a word. And that's a good thing because Jesus said no man has ever seen God and no man has ever heard his voice or seen a shape. And that is and that to me is a good You believe in Jesus, yeah? I don't believe in Jesus. I know there is I knew that there was Jesus and I knew that there was John. And I knew that the negative force do not like them. Because if you were to meditate and you were to create Jesus... How can you, how can you prove Jesus existed? Well, I'm explaining to you. Okay. Through meditation... You That's sub subjective though. Well, I, I first when I first came here, there were two little sprites. I've seen one of them here today. And they were telling me about subjective and objective. Yeah. And then they make an issue of it because I didn't know what the hell they were talking about. 
I mean, I know it's sad. I was 50 something, 60 something years of age, but. It's sad that they didn't explain it to you. If you asked them, they should have no, explained it to you. No, I didn't want to explain it to me because they had an attitude problem. I see. They, it, it, it wasn't like egotistic. Right, right. You see what I mean? And there again, but the ego is a good thing because the ego allows us to know that we are creators. Because we're not created with an ego. But we create the ego mindlessly hmm. through information that we receive. You see? So, and that's how they acted. And there was another one there, chap that used to stand there, and I tried to have a conversation with him. Yeah. And he said to me he had a PhD in Islam and I'm not qualified to speak with him. So I said, okay. That's not very nice. Well, it doesn't matter, is it? Yeah. That's how he felt about it. Yeah. <laughs> right, anyway, so are you come back up here again? Next yeah, Sunday? yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. But it was nice speaking to you. Same to me. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, in, it was interesting. And take care as well. And have a nice Christmas. Yeah, I'm just going to take these microphones off you. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Why do you have microphones in me? Uh, I think, I don't know about these two. Somebody put them onto you. I know this one, this is our one. Take care, all the best. Thank you, bye. These are yours, yeah? Yes, these are the